Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zane, better known as the King Bahamut, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 1 on the NES. Uh, in the last episode, uh, we got through Hell, better known as the Ice Cave, um, and in this episode you might be wondering, why am I getting into a battle after one fucking step? I don't have an answer for you on that one. Okay, after that very rude pair of spiders, uh, decided to, uh, screw with me, uh, we can actually get started on the real content of this episode. Getting poisoned again. Give me a minute. Never mind. Hey, was able to get away real quick there. Okay. So in this episode, uh, last episode, we obtained the floater from the ice cave, uh, and in this episode, we have to go find what it is that that, uh, particular item does. And I actually ran around all the way to the, um, the north side of the continent, which is not where we're supposed to go. And if you have a, uh, particularly eagle-eyed sense of direction. Yep, there's Provoka right there, actually. Uh, I didn't even need to bring the map up. Uh, but that's not where we need to go, so give me... Give me just a sec to actually get back there, because these enemies are going to... Waste my time again. Okay, back to where we were. I think we actually want to go down this way. Unless I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. Um, hang on, I may need to double check the, uh, walkthrough I'm using. So I really should have, uh, <laughs> uh, I do not remember this game anywhere near as well as I thought I did. So, what we actually have to do is we have to board our ship from where it is currently resting at the river. And not go here. Uh, give me a minute. Okay, so from this port, which is where you would normally go to Crescent Lake, you actually want to follow the coast around to the south. God, so many random encounters breaking the pace. Okay, follow the, the coast until you get to this river here, get in more fucking fights. And, uh, don't go down this branch of the river. Go around this way, I believe. Um. I am very much lost. I don't know how else to say it. I am lost. And that's a bad thing, because being lost in this game means, uh means just running into monsters constantly. It's one thing that's really starting to get in my, on my nerves at this point is just how much the pace is being broken by every freaking random encounter that we've been running into. So, we go... God bless. Case in point. At least with this one we can just run. I'm starting to get that sinking feeling that I have gone the wrong way. <sighs> Hold on a moment. Okay, so... Again, I am an idiot. I went... So what you're supposed to do is take the... This, um... Lower branch of that river that we passed by earlier and, uh... Use the... Use it to go west onto the narrow slip of land. And we're in the desert here. Go to the center of the desert. Uh, that is the wrong button. Bring up your item. Use the floater. The airship begins to rise from the desert. And wouldn't you know, we have an airship now. The airship is the best vehicle in the game because it can fly over everything. And there's no goddamn random encounters. 
So, unless we're in a dungeon, we don't got to worry about pace getting broken again. Uh, and the airship also allows us to do something else cool. So, currently, we are located over by Provoka. Um, but I actually want to go north and see if we can find... Uh, excuse me, the uh, Castle of Ordeals. So, I want to go west from where we are now. So west, here's the Castle of Ordeals, and then if I check the map again, uh, I believe we want to go west and over to this place. Now, the one downside of the airship is you land with the A button, uh, when you're in the air, but the airship cannot land on marsh terrain or forest terrain or even desert terrain. It can only land on flat ground. Um, I don't even think it can... Oh, no, it can land on the slightly different colored plane. Now, uh, these islands with holes in the ground are probably the single most important location in the game because they're full oh god what the fuck These ankylos Ankylo ankylosaurs please wow what the hell was that Ugh, that was slightly terrifying of course it just had to do the flippin' ambush right as soon as I land. It's like, I took one step, and it, it just, the game just decided to fuck me in the butt. Ugh. That's actually kind of, uh, infuriating. I... All right, let's go down this hole here before I get murdered again. Uh, this area is known as the Cardia Isles, aka the Dragon Isles. We have a race of sentient humanoid dragons. You are not afraid of me, then I am impressed. So this place is actually kind of important because one, there's a lot of treasure here, and that means, and particularly, a lot of money. Like, you are going to be swimming in money after, uh, after coming here, which is good, because you'll be able to use that money for some very important things very soon. So, let's gather up as much as we can. And then get out of this particular cave. Uh, and let's real quick use another house. Just so I have spell charges on hand in case I get ambushed by more enemies. I don't actually... Um, there's one particular entrance you want to take. Uh, that's especially, especially important in this area, but I don't actually remember where it is. Have you met Bahamut, the Dragon King? He honors those with courage as true warriors. So that's a important hint, considering that we went through the Castle of Ordeals, which was uh, purportedly designed to test our courage. The one thing about this airship is that it moves so fast that it can sometimes be a little bit of a pain in the ass to control. Sometimes feels like you're overshooting where it is you actually want to land. Look at this guy. We are going to the Castle of Ordeals to the northeast. There we will test and bring back, our, back proof of our courage. So yeah, like I said, as long as you have completed the... Uh, the uh, Ice Cave and the Castle of Ordeals um, it is very worth your while to come here. 
Only if you have completed both of those dungeons. If you have not completed Castle of Ordeals yet, I recommend doing that. The proof of your courage might be anything. Once in the north, there were beautiful palaces and big mechanical castles. We have a house here. 500 gold. Nice to have, but not too uh, exciting. I have to say, I really, really like that there's just a race of humanoid dragons that uh, live in this world. It's just... I mean, like, Final Fantasy 1 already took a bunch of ideas from mythologies around the world uh, when they came up with the monsters, but but considering that this is a game that, you know, uses pretty typical races like elves and dwarves, it's just so... it just feels... The, the dragons that live in this area, you know, the dragon people that live in this area, they just feel so unique to me. Um, and I, I really wish more games would have, you know, just races of friendly dragons wandering around. Although I'm saying that, and I am a big uh, dragon person, as you can probably tell by me naming myself the King Bahamut after the king of this place. So this is the most important part of coming here is this room. So let's talk to these guys first. This is Bahamut's room. Bahamut verifies the true courage of all. So this is Bahamut, the Dragon King. Now if you're familiar with uh, other Final Fantasy games, you probably are very well w aware of Bahamut. He's not quite, um, he doesn't quite um, do, he doesn't quite do what you might expect though. Talk to him. The tail of a rat proves your courage. I shall give you I shall give you the honor due true warriors. Talk to him. And suddenly you might notice that my overworld sprite changed a little bit. Go into our menu, and lo and behold, we have undergone a class change. No longer is my character a red wizard or a red mage, I should say. He's a red wizard. Brian is now a knight. Risa is a white wizard. And looking admittedly pretty masculine, which... <laughs> uh, not much I can do about that. And Lewis is a black wizard now. So, if you have completed the Castle of Ordeals and gotten the tail, Bahamut will give you a class change, which will increase your stats, give you some cool new uh, overworld and in-battle sprites, uh, in the case of your mages, it will also allow you to access some new magic. It'll generally give you a bunch of new toys to play with. And apart from just looking really cool, it's an extremely helpful thing to have. So I recommend that you get this as soon as possible. The enemies around the islands here are admittedly kind of dangerous, as you saw from the encounter with those red ankyl ankylosaurs that we had. Um, but the rewards are more than worth it. This class change is very important. Talk to this guy. If you are brave enough, try meeting the king of the dragons, Bahamut. Do you not see how I look? What do you think? What do you take me for? Talk to this guy. Unprofitable business is not a practice of the dragons of Cardia. Talk to you. Long ago, dragons and humans lived and traded together. I don't know what actually makes these guys uh, different from the regular evil dragons we've been facing. That may have something to do with the fact that they're uh, connected to Bahamut, who seems like a pretty cool dude. But yeah, we have a class change now. Um, so the main thing with the class change is that, um, it not only, uh, like I said, it not only gives you, uh, different appearance, but it also means that your, your stats and abilities have changed. And this is actually, um, 
In the case of our our three wizards, the red wizard, white wizard, and black wizard, uh, they can actually buy some magic spells from previous towns that we couldn't get before. Uh, which is, uh, like for example, the warp spell back in Melmond, or the exit spell from Crescent Lake. Uh, so I recommend that you go and pick those spells up in particular because they're going to be extremely important uh, in the future. Uh, now, the other two classes that I did not choose when making my party, the Thief and the Black Belt. Black Belt gets upgraded to the Master, who is honestly just a Black Belt with better stats, except weirdly enough, I think Magic Defense. I think the, the Black Belt's Magic Defense is slightly better than the Master's uh, Magic Defense. But the Thief will actually get upgraded to the Ninja, and the Ninja is interesting because he can actually cast a, a limited pool of um, black magic, excuse me. Um, and in particular, the ninja can learn the fast spell, which will give him the ability to, uh, to boost your party member's attack pattern. I'm pressing the wrong button, that's why it's not landing. Um, now, the knight also has the ability to equip some magic. He can equip some low-level white magic, uh, which, again, I actually do recommend you do that um, because he, um, because having some extra cures around uh, that you can just throw out uh, in between battles can actually be uh, kind of handy to have. Talk to this guy. Only the courageous ones bring, bring back the proof of their courage. Right. But yeah, that's the Cardia Islands. And now we have our airship, and we have our upgraded classes. So I'm actually going to take a little bit of time and go around the world and see, and, uh, see some stuff that we can do now that we have our upgraded classes. So, first things first, we have to land in the correct spot. Uh, let's go to Corneria and see what white magic spells our newly knighted Brian can purchase. So let's give him some cure and some harm. Uh, he can't learn harm, actually. He can learn the cure spell. Uh, but unfortunately, he doesn't have any uh, spell charges at the moment. Um, I think he'll have to we'll have to level him up a couple of times. That's the one thing about this, um, is I highly recommend that you get this class change as soon as possible because, well, one, it makes the game a lot easier <laughs> uh, going forward. But... In the case of some party members that gain the ability to use magic who couldn't use magic before, it does mean that you will potentially, um, they may potentially uh, get screwed out of spell charges if you get the class change at too high of a level. Um, so... Now, I don't know what else I might want to get from... Actually, I know what. Uh, I want to go to Elfland, uh, which is right here. And land, and I think that the level, the tier 3 white magic shop will have some stuff for us, if I can remember where it is. Um, it's up here, yeah. Go around. And I think actually this tier 3 is the highest level, uh, white magic that, uh, Brian can get. 
But I also think that he... Oh. Well, he can learn the uh, A-Fire spell, which... That's actually kind of... Kind of helpful uh, for the next dungeon we have on the docket, which we will not be going to just yet. For right now, I want to really quickly... Uh, pop off over to Melmond and go uh, actually to both of the magic shops here because we have this magic shop and Lewis can now uh, that's oh that's wrong shop that's why it's not showing anything that he can get get the warp spell will allow me to move back to previous floors in the dungeon, or if I am on the first floor of a dungeon, I can just uh, get out of there right away. But then there's also the all-important exit spell. This right here, this is the next dungeon we have to go to, by the way. Uh, just so you know, that big uh, volcano can only reach it with the airship, so you do have to complete the ice cave at the very least uh, in order to get there. I'm going the very much wrong way. So, so let's go over here to Crescent Lake. And find the white magic shop. Right here. And get Risa the exit spell for 20,000 gold. So it's a bit of an investment, but super worth it. Uh, if you don't need to use the soft spell, which honestly I don't recommend you get that too much, um, but it. If you don't uh, use the soft spell too much, it doesn't mean that you can um, use that tier of magic exclusively for your exit spell, uh, which is very useful. I am losing brain functionality, so I may need to wrap this episode up pretty quick. Um, so let's start... So airship moves so fast that it sometimes is, causes the world going by to uh, be a bit of an eye strain. It's slightly odd because that's not usually a problem I have with this game. I mean, it is very simplistic looking, but I mean, it looks kind of nice actually, you know, for an NES game. So we have a town here. I don't remember. I know that there's a few towns we can visit now that we have the airship, one of which is potentially a very good place to go. Is it here? I think so. Let's go to this. I think this is the town of Gaia. This town is Gaia. Yes, I was correct. Um, so, town of Gaia is kind of an optional, out-of-the-way place. But it is worth coming here, because you can get level 7 magic, including the Cure Force Bell and Harm Force Bell. And on the black magic side of things, you can get Ice 3 and Brack, or Break, if you're more familiar with modern spell terminology. Uh, Ice 3 is actually very good for the dungeon we have coming up, so I recommend grabbing that. And I don't have enough for any of the level 7 magic. Um, so anyways, talk to this broom. Uh, do you have great power? Why, yes I do. I have a class, I have attained a class change. What's that uh, broom up to? It's talking backwards. So subtle hint about what you need to do in order to decode his message. Unbelievable! You are outsiders, right? How did you get this far north? Magic. Have you been to the city south of here? 
I just cannot understand a word spoken there. I have wondered what language... So that's an important hint for later, is that we won't be able... If we went to that town that we passed by in the middle of the forest, we wouldn't have been able to do anything there. Everyone thinks the tower in Yan Kerm Desert is a mirage. I wonder. Well, that's another hint for later, but that's uh, not going to be something that we're, we'll be able to do too much with. Um, oh, we have uh, weapon and armor shops here. So, let's see. Cat Claw. Uh, that's hella expensive, but the Cat Claw is actually the best piece of uh, weapon equipment for the Black Wizard. So, I do recommend grabbing that. Uh, if and when you collect enough gold. And the armor shop here sells gold bracers, which are hella expensive, and I don't really recommend you get because there are... Uh, there's a piece of body armor designed for uh, white and black wizards that's has as much defense as the gold bracer, but also has a couple of other cool things about it that make it more worth getting than the gold bracelet, in my opinion, of much greater importance is the pro ring, the protective ring. This is the only piece of gauntlet equipment that uh, most of your uh, mage characters will be able to get for uh, for a long time, so I highly recommend that you grab it. Oh, and by the way, um, now that we have the um, now that we have uh, attained our class change, my red mage, my character, can finally equip the Zeus Gauntlet, and that is going to be staying on him for the rest of the game, uh, in no small part because. I, um, in no small part because I'm going to be making use of that uh, piece of equipment. But since we do have a little, just a little bit of cash to burn, I'm actually going to buy the Pro Ring for Lewis. I really only recommend you buy one, or, uh, sorry, um, it may not be too worth it to buy um, Pro Rings because they, you will get some later on in the game, but I do um, recommend that you, oh god brain, please. Uh, I do recommend that you get them. Um, if, if not here, then pick them up later on in the game because pro rings, like I said, they are the only, they're only, you only really need two of them. Um, and you will get two through the course of the game, so it may be better off to save your money here. But I do recommend that you get them when you get the chance, because they're probably the best and really only other piece of gauntlet equipment that mages can equip besides gloves. But they also protect from instant death attacks. So that means that the rub spell that kept bodying me throughout my trek through the ice cave will not work on your mages, which is, uh, kind of, kind of helpful, not gonna lie, would have really liked that, uh, when I, when I was, uh, trekking through the ice cave, but you know what, that's, that, uh, ordeal is done and dusted, um, and we have our brand new upgraded warriors of light here, and oh boy, now that that is done, uh, I have a feeling that this game is going to start getting a lot more fun a lot fast. Um, so in the next episode, off camera, I'm going to real quick do a little bit of grinding because I have a bunch of uh, magic spells that I want to purchase from a few different places across the globe. And I need the monies if I'm going to do that. So... I'm going to take some time and get myself monies, and then in the next episode, we will go to the next dungeon, Gurgu Volcano.
and see what trials await us there. It's probably another elemental fiend. Just a hint. Just a hu uh, hutch. Ugh. Hunch. God, I can't even talk. All right. Uh, till next time. This is this is Zane, better known as the King Bahamut, and I will see you in the next episode. Take care.